Hello. In this short video, I'd like to talk a bit more about paper revisions and why they are so critical. So basically, nobody manages to really write a first draft that's perfect. So what really distinguishes good papers or excellent papers from OK ones is really the amount of revisions and the type of revisions that people really do. So Let's go into some of the examples and details. What I'd like to do is give some advice and some suggestions on how you might go about this. So first of all, I think it's really important to get some distance. So especially once you spend a lot of time writing the first draft, really try to get a new perspective because it's really important that you are able to switch back and forth between your own perspective, uh, the author's perspective, where you know so much about the topic and almost switching that off so you can really get a reader's perspective. Another thing is really rethinking. So what is really the key message of the paper overall? Is that clear enough? How can you really build up your whole paper to support this? And a lot of what I talk about here also applies to presentations, although I don't recommend actually writing these out completely. They would suggest just using keywords, but the main idea is still the same. What's the key purpose? What's the main idea behind it? And is everything centered around that? So it's also the purpose and intention of each paragraph. So once you have the main structure and break that down, then be clear what each paragraph is supposed to do. That can also help to make sure there's not that much redundancy in there. And another question you can ask yourself is there, are there other ways to put it? So is there anything you might have missed? Are you presenting all the different possible perspectives that people can have? So really, rethinking and trying to get some distance is really key. And of course, getting somebody else's perspective is super useful there. So make sure to get somebody else's view on your writing. But also don't feel like you have to revise everything. Sometimes the first draft happens to be good for a sentence or even a paragraph. So you really have a reason to revise and try to get reviews and ask them to really prioritize on what you should focus on. It doesn't really make sense to fiddle with uh, specific phrasings and terminology and details if that whole paragraph might not even make sense or might need to be completely rewritten. And finally, there's a lot of advice out there. There's a lot of checklists. There's checklists from our course in the literature, things we have on our course management website. So really try to use this and it's kind of like switching between uh, the writer perspective and your writer's mindset and the reader's or reviewer's mindset. And you can imagine different readers, maybe somebody who uh, whose work you're citing. So make sure you don't step too much on their toes more than needed. Or somebody who's new to the field and you really need to get them motivated. So almost imagine different personas. Here's an example uh, from Nancy Somers uh, that could be useful. It's also linked on Canvas, of course. And then really prioritize first things first. So start with the main message. What is it really? Is it conveyed clearly early on so people don't get lost in the details of your paper? And then gradually go top down. So make structural big changes first before you go into detail. Often there's a lot of redundancy, especially if uh, certain kinds of information are spread across different parts of the paper. So does your paper, the organization, the flow, the line of logic and line of argument really work well? This is key both for presentations and for papers. It's really what, what distinguishes an okay one from a really good one is often the flow that when you read the last sentences of one section or paragraph, you're almost primed and interested in reading on because you, it really motivates what's coming next. And as I mentioned, so try to fix all these big picture items really before going into any of these details. Else really a lot of the changes you might do might just get deleted uh, because they're not part of the final paper. <clears throat> so the next thing you can do is really revise for clarity. So really rethink uh, from the perspective of a lay person or somebody who's really smart but busy. He's not specifically, who's not specifically in your field, but in general interested. 
And this can also help to simplify the argument. So especially if you feel stuck, how would you explain it to a lay person? And if you have another person, do you can play uh, uh, this kind of devil's advocate game with or who can give you feedback, maybe give them, pitch the idea, the main idea of it, ask them to explain it to you back. Often they will reduce the unnecessary details and really focus on the key parts and then you'll also be able to more specifically assess whether you really got it or not, whether it's clear enough or not. So this can really help to simplify, clarify and argue more clearly. So things you can ask yourself is, for example, does each sentence logically follow on the previous one? Is that line of logic really clear? Does it guide the reader to its anticipating what comes next or even prime them? <clears throat> The flow and the clear line of logic and thought is really essential for a good paper that people actually enjoy reading. So if you cannot really see the logic crystal clear, readers likely won't be able to see that either. And just to debunk this, so good science is not complex and complicated. It's intrinsically complex, the topic might be, but the phrasing really shouldn't be. So complex sentences really aren't any more scientific or scholar. They, they're just kind of dull and annoying. So things like uh, that really don't help is nominalizations, uh, a lot of passive phrasings. So in the methods, that's kind of the one part uh, where you really want to be cautious not to bring in your individual perspective. Your passive phrasing sometimes makes sense. Uh, the results is the other part where you don't want to bring in your own perspective. But other than that, I think it's, it really makes sense to use active and direct phrasing as much as possible. If the subject of the sentence is not clear, so being vague in terms of who did what and so on can really be an issue. Having convoluted sentence structures can really be quite annoying. Long sentences, dragging on sentences, uh, nested sentences. So really, if the sentences drag on over multiple lines, uh, it might just be too long and often it helps everybody to really make it simpler. Sometimes it can also help if you just kind of talk about the topic, maybe even record it and then see what phrasing you use there. Typically, it's a lot simpler than what you would when you're actually writing directly. So you can use that as a trick there as well. Another thing that can really be useful is to write with a specific audience in mind. So you can imagine specific people. It could be a supervisor, it could be a reader, a reviewer, it could be a specific author you're citing that you know is really smart, really on uh, top of the game. So how can you convince them and make an argument that they would accept? Also imagine someone who might have a different opinion. So how would you write for that? Would it what you write be convincing and acceptable for them or would you just kind of annoy them too much? So really trying to write for your likely readers and reviewers. So it helps to have an idea of where you might uh, submit your work. And really think about their perspective. What do you think they will look for? What do they want to see? What might they actually be interested in? And so it helps to imagine both a somewhat more general audience and a very specific one. So people who are already convinced from the topic. So they need to make sure that you convey that you know what you're talking about, but also people who are a bit outside of the field but generally interested, can you really draw them in? Can you make it clear enough that this topic is interesting? And of course, check whether there's any official standards or requirements for your writing, the formatting, all these kind of things. You can find this on the conference and journal website typically. And make sure to not tease or annoy your audiences and reviewers. So if somebody did prior work on that, even if it's 100 years ago, please cite it. Be generous in terms of citing. You will want to be cited, so make sure you cite other people. So one thing that can tick off reviewers, rightfully so, is if the author claims, oh, that's the first thing, whatever, best thing in sliced bread, and there has been something. People have done this before, so make sure you do a thorough literature review and really cite these people. It often helps to also cite the first person, first folks who actually developed something, use something like that, not just the most recent one, especially if the initial idea is really important. And also when you cite somebody else, unless it's really marginal, well in that case you probably shouldn't cite it anyways, 
So if it has any value for your paper, really try to give enough information so you don't require the, uh, readers to really read your paper, sorry, read the paper you're citing. So give enough information to be able to understand your line of reasoning um, and what people did in the paper you're citing without your audience having to read all of these. Then another step you can do is really once you've written another draft of your paper, really read and revise as a critical reviewer. So again, you can put it in somebody else's head. So you can imagine reading your paper with the same devastating analytic acuity you use if you wish to demolish the work of your most loathsome enemy. This might be a little bit extreme, but it can really help to kind of bulletproof your paper, make sure it's not overly simplified, missing out details. So really try and put on your best critique hat and see how your paper stands. And if you have a hard time doing that, again, ask somebody else to play this. So really enjoy taking apart your own arguments to strengthen them. And yes, ask colleagues to do the same, do it for each other. That's where a team is really super useful. If you have co-authors, you can ask them specifically to kind of bulletproof to try out different aspects and see where things might not be clear enough. You can anticipate criticism, critical readers' reactions, so really write for that. Uh, so yes, you can imagine being your worst uh, enemy critic. Um, that could be the one whose theory, whose data you're questioning. And keep in mind, that person is actually not unlikely to be your, your reviewer. Even if you resubmit a paper, you might get the same reviews again. So really make sure that you're not being more offensive than absolutely uh, critical, not more critical about other people's work. So this can happen very easily, especially if there's a huge debate or you try and do something new. Really try to be well, in a way, think of them as human beings. I mean, nobody wants to have their work criticized in a non-scholarly form. Um, so also keep in mind, I mean, they, they might become your colleagues, they might be your future employers, they might be your reviewers, so really treat uh, people well. Um, the thing you can do strategically is really try and cite likely referees. Else, uh, something like this could happen. Imagine being the expert in a field. You get a paper to review, which is in your field. You first check to see which of your influential papers were cited. Not at all. How ignorant must that author be? Now let's see how you can find reasons to reject the paper from such an incompetent author. Well, this might be seem a bit over the top, but people are still humans. I mean, if you spent decades or your team or lab uh, is dedicated to a cause and you feel like you did substantial work in there and you're not being cited at all, then this uh, doesn't exactly increase the likelihood of that paper uh, being put forward and getting positive reviews. So really make sure you know who, who did what and put cite those people. And especially when you're submitting for a specific journal, have that in mind already, a conference, a venue, they have very specific standards, guidelines, requirements, acceptable topic areas, formatting, and so on. So really make sure you follow these. Often there's a standard word or LaTeX format template. So make sure to use this. It really shows you're prepared and you're thorough. And finally, make sure to never ever send off something before carefully proofreading your paper. So, and of course, I mean, you absolutely have to use uh, grammar checkers and word and uh, uh, also like spell checkers. So uh, there's lots of built-in checkers like in Word, but there's also a web-based one like Grammarly that also works if you use Overleaf or light, uh, Latex and so on. And also make sure to really read it yourself one more time. And there's certain things that a uh, computer really cannot find. If you have authors, really make sure co-authors, if you have co-authors, make sure to send it to them well before the deadline and let them know when you'll send it to them so they have a decent chance of ever, of really giving you the feedback that you need. And feel free to ask them specifically what you'd like to see from them. Okay, so I hope this little review on how to revise papers is useful.
Thanks a lot.